Good morning, evening, recess, whenever uh, you're watching this grade 8s. Welcome to the first video of your flip grade 8 math class this year. Um, today we're going to be talking about the bank method for multiplying integers. Um, the one term I want you to be familiar with here is uh, integers. Uh, you've hopefully heard of it before. And uh, if you haven't, basically what integers is, is uh, positive or negative numbers. Typically, we only deal with, uh, you know, even dealing with just positive numbers in uh, your math. But uh, in grade 8, we're going to do a lot of stuff with negative integers. So that would be something as uh, simple as minus or negative 3, or you could have a uh, number like positive 4. And we're going to be dealing with these numbers and, and all that. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to show you a very simple way to multiply these integers using something called the bank method. So what is the bank method? Essentially, the bank method is this uh, giant circle here. And uh, that's our bank. And inside is uh, there's going to be a value. And whatever the value is, that's going to be our answer. Okay. So uh, there is one term I want you to become familiar with when dealing with integers, and it's called a zero pair. Now, essentially what a zero pair is, it's when you have a negative, and a negative and a positive, and they cancel each other out. So if you had a plus one and a negative one, your value would be zero. So a zero pair is when you have a negative and a positive, you just cancel each other out. So let's take a look at our bank. Uh, sometimes, oh, sorry, one here. Uh, what you'll notice sometimes is uh, there'll be nothing in the bank. Like right here, I'll get rid of these. So what is the value of our bank right now? Uh, nothing. Zero. There's nothing in it, right? So uh, what we do is we, we start off by putting uh, some positive and negative integers into our bank. So I'll just paste some in here. Move that over. And I'll paste these in here. Okay. Now, if I look at my bank, there seems to be a lot happening inside of it. Um, but let's see what the actual value of it is. Well, if you notice, every positive sign is paired up with a negative sign. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten positive signs and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten negative signs. So they're all zero pairs. So essentially, this bank has a value of zero right now. There's nothing in it. It looks like there's a lot in it, but they all cancel each other out, so the value is zero. So let's see how we can use this to actually multiply some numbers, some integers. So I'm going to start off with something simple. Positive 3 times positive 2. Well, the answer should be positive 6, right? You've learned that. That's like grade 3 math. Um, let's see how you can actually model it so you really get an understanding of these negative and positive numbers. Well, what you have to do is you have to look at the first number. In this case, positive 3. That tells us a lot about this bank method. What that means is there's a positive sign. So we are going to, anytime you see a positive sign in that first number, it means we're going to be adding something to the bank. So a positive sign means I'm going to add something to this bank. Okay. The, the number means how many groups we're going to be adding. So I can think of it this way. I'm going to be adding three groups to this bank. So I'm going to put a circle here. There's one group. Uh, we don't know what we're going to put in that group yet, but I know I'm going to make three groups because I need three groups in there. So these circles just kind of are the three groups. You get that? So positive means I'm going to add, and three means three groups. I have three groups. The second number is going to tell us what goes in those groups. In this case, um, each group of three needs two positive signs. So I'm going to positive here positive here. There's another group, positive sign, positive sign, positive sign, positive sign. So now there's my answer. Uh, these zero pairs cancel each other out here. These all cancel each other out. These all cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is these positive signs I just added. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, Six. So my answer is six positive. Positive six. Okay. That's the bank method. Let's look at a different example. Same numbers, almost, except for in this case, it's a negative three to start off. So when we do this, the first number tells us it's a negative sign. So instead of adding like we did in this example, we added 
Well, if it's a negative sign, we're going to take away. And we're still going to take away three groups. So I'm going to start erasing things out here. I just don't know. Am I erasing positive signs or negative signs? Well, that's dependent upon the second number. In this case, I'm going to take out three groups of two positives. That's what it tells me. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go find two positives. And I'm going to get rid of them. Boom. Boom. There's one group. Oh, boom. Boom. I've taken out two groups of positive two. Let's go here. i got to take this one out. And over here, take out that positive. Boom. So I've taken out three groups of positive two. Well, what am I left with? If you notice, these all cancel each other out here so I can erase them. They cancel each other out and I'm left with my answer. In this case, my answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negative. So I go over here and say my answer is negative 6. There you go. So negative 3 times positive 2 gives me negative 6. Moving on. So over here, same thing, positive 3 times negative 2. Well, the first number tells me I'm going to add three groups. I'm going to put my groups in there. One, two, three groups. My second group tells me I'm adding three groups of negative 2. So in that case, in this group, I'm going to put a negative, negative. Over here, negative, negative. Over here, negative, negative. And there's my answer because these guys cancel each other out. These guys cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is whatever is inside these groups. In this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 negatives. Minus 6. That's my answer. So... Positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. One more example. Negative 3 times negative 2. Hmm. Okay, so now I know I'm going to be taking away three groups. Okay, so I'm going to take away three groups from here of negative 2. So let's start taking three groups away. So I'm going to take away three groups of negative 2. I'm going to take that negative away and that negative. That's one group. I'm going to take that negative away, and that negative away. That's two groups. I'm move this out of the way here. And I'm going to take this negative away, and this negative away. Now, what I'm left with is, will these cancel each other out? And I'm left with my answer right there. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm left with six positive or positive six. A negative times a negative will give you a positive. Oh, oops, I meant to do this. Oops, sorry. Positive 6. There you go. So that's the bank method. I'm going to ask you at home to try negative 4 times negative 2. Answer that as best you can. Put your answer down in the comment section on Edmodo. I'm just showing you what might help you out is. First, you have to add some here. Negative 4, what's that negative mean? What's negative 2 mean? Come up with an answer. Answer in the comment section. Thanks a lot. We will uh, see you tomorrow in class, and we'll uh, start working on these.